Hi there. In the last week of the course, we focused on the link between policymakers and academics. We observed that policymakers could benefit from more rigorously testing their assumptions and ideas uh, that might form the basis of their work as we also discussed in the week on assumptions on counterterrorism, Policymakers could also benefit from the input of academics to develop a more reflective uh, attitude, a more critical stand towards their work, and hopefully better evidence-based policies. Against this backdrop, I'm very happy to introduce to you Dr. Joanna Cook. She is a senior project manager at the Inst International Center for Counterterrorism, the ICT, based here in The Hague. And she's the editor in chief of the ICT Journal. And she's also an assistant professor at Leiden University. Um, her research more broadly focuses on women and gender in violent extremism, countering violent extremism, and counterterrorism practices. So we're very happy to have you uh, here, Dr. Cook. Uh, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. One of your projects is with the International Organization of Migration, a UN body, and it focuses on the uh, prosecution, uh, rehabilitation and reintegration of thousands of um, Islamic State affiliated families from Iraq that are currently in al Hol camp in Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us a little bit more about this project? Sure. So. Uh, after the Islamic State um, uh, fell in 2019 in the Battle of Baghuz, we saw a lot of the families that had been affiliated with Islamic State fighters end up in a, in a place in northeast Syria called El Hol Camp. So El Hol Camp currently houses uh, the majority of Islamic State affiliated uh, families that still uh, remain in the region. Iraq has 30,000 um, citizens currently in El Hol Camp, 94% of which are women and children. And so the government of Iraq has made a commitment now to return those populations to Iraq and to try and rehabilitate and reintegrate them um, and also to prosecute adults where appropriate. So they've got a very big task ahead of them, a very complex task. And so we were commissioned as the International Center for Counterterrorism to go support some of the work that they're doing over there. So the International Organization of Migration and the, Nat uh, the National Security Advisor in Iraq. We, we set up a series of roundtables where we were able to come and present, uh, present research-based evidence to inform some of the works that they're currently thinking about in relation to rehabilitation and reintegration of these uh, populations. So they've set up a, a camp, or not a camp, uh, it's a center, it's a rehabilitation center in, uh, in uh, Iraq called Jeddah One. And in the center, they'll be bringing these populations back in small uh, groups and rehabilitating them before reintegrating them into society. So what we had the opportunity to do with them was to bring research-based evidence to the table to discuss things like, how do you rehabilitate um, adults who have experienced or have been affiliated with Islamic State members? Maybe some and of them is, have- if, <laughs> if, if I may, like, where's this, this, uh, this evidence? Is it based on field study somewhere else or other areas? Uh, think of uh, people um, uh, from, from uh, war zones in, in Africa. So, so what is this, this evidence based on, on what research or what examples is this based? Yeah, so there's a lot of research out there already that we can draw off of, but also there's, uh, because it's a very unique population in many ways, we also have to think about how research from different fields can apply to, to what we're looking at. So there's rehabilitation um, of, of terrorists that has occurred for ages. And there's a lot of uh, studies on countries like Saudi Arabia, uh, Yemen, uh, countries around Europe that have tried to rehabilitate terrorists. But the problem is with those, most of those were adult males. Most of those were in prisons, but they can still inform things like what are some of the best practices around rehabilitating or, or good practices around rehabilitating actors that we've seen in those cases. But we have to also then think about what does that mean if we're dealing with adult women? So what are some of the gender differences or distinctions with that? If we're looking at the case of children, you know, children aren't necessarily indoctrinated. We don't, we don't view them as, uh, as indoctrinated in the way that um, adults might be, but we've got to think about some of the complex experiences children have had in those, um, in uh, being affiliated with this organization. 
So many of them have been out of school for years. Many of them have seen um, very severe violence. Many of them might not have a, a social identity um, outside of that uh, of Islamic State. So we can think about other fields of research that can help inform this work as well. So for example, we looked at research that's been done on child soldiers. Uh, you can also draw off um, research that's been done with uh, children uh, in gangs, for example, or cults, or you can think about some of the different elements that children might face in those environments and how research from other fields can help us think more robustly about the best way to support children in this particular environment. Well, interesting. I mean, you 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 um, uh, use a lot of different uh, backgrounds, a lot of different disciplines, and also you notice that uh, I guess also in terrorism studies we focus mainly on the man and on the, the those that commit violence. But but here we're talking really about thousands of of children, thousands of women. Um, so you 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 were asked by or the authorities asked for help. This this evidence based, research based um, uh, knowledge, but then. How do you do that in practice? So um, you just came back from actually from Iraq. So how does that work in practice? How you as an academic with all the knowledge and, and, and a lot of your colleagues with all their knowledge, then you go to Iraq and then, then what? How does that work? Yeah, so we had the, the fortunate opportunity to set up a series of workshops, particularly with actors in Iraq. So uh, actors from very different segments of the, uh, the government and, and authorities who would actually be working directly with these populations. So we come with a certain set of knowledge, but they have, the, they have uh, knowledge in areas that we don't as well. So it's about how we can bring together our shared knowledge and discuss in the most robust manner how uh, the research that we've identified, for example, or conducted can match up or marry to the context that they're facing and the experience that they have. So context matters in this field. Context matters um, significantly. And so better understanding the, um, finding out what some of the, the challenges that they face in this work or some of the concerns that they're facing in their communities. A lot of these communities have a lot of resistance to bringing these populations back. So by better understanding their own views, their experiences, strength and limitations of the work that they're already doing, we can best uh, identify and support areas where that knowledge that we can bring uh, can add a, an extra value or something unique to help them better conduct the work that's so important for them to do. Well, it's a, it's a two-way street. So you go there, you bring a lot of knowledge, but you get new questions uh, and, and, and new dilemmas and, and then you together try to figure it out. So Absolutely. So for example, um, Iraq is a tribal society. And so the role of tribal leaders is very important in the work in reintegration. The tribal leaders can act as gatekeepers, they can help support these families, they can provide guarantees for these families to return to their communities. And that's something quite new to me. But what we can bring, for example, is understanding how rehabilitation has worked in other contexts and what has worked and what hasn't worked. So for example, we can emphasize things like research has shown that you should focus on changing people's behaviors and not focus on changing people's ideology. So we're not trying to brainwash people that are coming back but in cases where uh, adults in particular might still um, be committed to an organization or still might be motivated um, to support Islamic State ideology, we can focus on things like changing behaviors instead of changing mindsets uh, in some ways, which has been proven in many other cases to be much more effective. We're trying to change people's behaviors. We're not trying to brainwash them, for example. Interesting. We have also in our course a, a whole debate about the difference between disengagement and de-radicalization. So either make sure that people are in a different setting versus trying to change their ideas. That very much ties into that debate as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure that um, our viewers would very much love to know more about uh, your pro uh, project. So um, uh, we highly recommend, of course, uh, a visit to the ICT website. Do you have uh, any publication or a project that you would recommend to our viewers? Yes, of course. So I think one of the most uh, relevant uh, publications we have coming out is uh, we've got a book coming out this fall actually called The Rule is for None But Allah, Islamist Approaches to Governance. And the book has really helped us better understand how terrorist organizations approach the, the subject of governance. And again, how they reach out to different actors like, like family members, women and children, for example, uh, in, in making those decisions as well. So that book is one that I would highly recommend. Uh, and there's also my book, uh, A Woman's Place, U.S. Counterterrorism Since 9-11, which also helps think about some of the, the more counterterrorism related aspects to approaching these groups and distinct populations. Oh, excellent. 
Well, thank you very much for this very interesting uh, interview, uh, sharing your experience um, uh, in this project, but also uh, your general um, uh, experience with research into these very difficult and complicated issues. Again, I, I mentioned that I'm sure many people want to know more about it. So I highly recommend a visit to the website of the International Center for Counterterrorism uh, and that you can find at icct.nl. Uh, Dr. Cook, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me.